we stopped to have some fun in the creek. As you can see, the tiger enjoyed its bath. I was so excited on my first opportunity to ford the creek that I uh, left my camera case on the passenger podium. Oops, there it goes. And all my accessories. The worst part was the spare batteries were in there. There you have it. You got to see my camera go, well, not the camera, the accessories and all of my spare batteries go in the screen. That was pretty close to the end of my video recording for the driftless area. Unfortunately, you know, batteries, even though action cameras are waterproof, the batteries are not. So I had one battery that I had used the prior day and it was almost gone. That's what I had to take some of the footage you saw earlier in this video. So I am going to take the time to, to go over a little bit of the trip. We did four states, started in Iowa and Dubuque. I was pleasantly surprised at the bar scene in Dubuque. Uh, if you ever have like a weekend away with the wife, no kids, Dubuque might be a good place to go. Uh, hit up a couple downtown bars, breweries, stay at a hotel, maybe one of those historic b and Outside of Dubuque, we went to Balltown, had the oldest bar in Iowa, and had a really nice picnic overlook. Say hi, Tom. Bad, so. <laughs> it was kind of Amish country up there, lots of rolling hills. One thing I didn't know about the Driftless area, it's one of the only areas in North America, at least in the Midwest, that was not covered by glacial ice. So what happened was there are high hills in Wisconsin, and there are lowlands that are Lake Michigan and lowlands created by the lakes in Minnesota. So the, they acted like funnels, and they took all of the ice away from the Driftless area. So we went up to Effigy Mound National Park, and the mounds aren't super impressive. From the LiDAR photos they had there, you can see some pretty cool designs, the bear, um, the snake, some other items like campfire. Had a really good lookout over the Mississippi River. But when you think about the context of how old those mounds are, everything else in the area was split by ice, which made the flat plains that kind of feed America today, right? All of the fertile flatlands in Iowa, and the dairy farms of Wisconsin. This driftless area still has the rolling hills and streams of thousands of years ago. These mounds are thousands of years old too. They really give us an insight into what the Native American life is like. So it's pretty unique, and I was happy to get my passport stamped there. We rode all the way up to Minnesota along the Mississippi, all the way to La Crosse, Wisconsin, and then we rode from La Crosse, Wisconsin, following the river um, back down towards the view. We did stop at a bar there. It was kind of hilarious. It was a Harley bar. There were at least 40 Harleys parked outside. Here I am in my Triumph t-shirt. My buddy's riding a 650 Gladius. We pull up there and he's like, you know, it is a uh, Wisconsin tradition to get an old-fashioned at a bar, so he had these drinks with little umbrellas and cherries. We sat there in the in the Harley bar with all these leather-clad old-timers, big old pearly biker guys. We drank our old-fashioned, bullshitted about the day. They didn't talk to us too much. I can't imagine why. <laughs> he was giving me shit about having a triumph shirt on in the Harley bar, and I was like, shit, I'm the only one here that's owned a Harley. Stop giving me crap. I love Harley. So anyway, after that, we went down to Potosi, Wisconsin, and uh, went through the brewery museum there, had a couple beers, and that place is awesome. If you're ever in southwestern Wisconsin, you have to stop at the Potosi Brewery. They had uh, Mook's Brewery advertising memorabilia way, from way back the turn of the century, and I'm not talking 1990s, I'm talking the 1900s. 
Oh, look at that. Beautiful Kansas City. Beautiful, mighty Missouri River. Maybe we'll get lucky today and see some planes taken off. We can do a little danger zone race or something. Yeah, so the Potosi Brewery was awesome. I had their uh, Czech Pilsner, which is a very, very good beer. And I got a couple cans of Doppelbach for the road. That was great, too. Uh, then we hit the Illinois state line. We were pretty sweet by that point. We had gone over 300 miles plus stop and hiked a little over two miles in Epidemi Mountains National Park. Ah, oh, there's a helicopter over the city line. Maybe no planes today, but I see something in there. All right. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I think it's not going to turn in time. Come on, baby, turn. I want to race. Uh, we'll just do this. See ya. <laughs> For some reason, he didn't get turned in time, and I just didn't think, Oh, wait. Thank you, sir. I think that movie's out now, the second one. So, yeah, Potosi was awesome. We were beat by the time we hit Illinois. Made it back to camp for the night. Did some relaxing. Parted ways in the morning. And then uh, I headed my 430-mile journey back home. The only thing that happened interesting on the way back home was uh, <laughs> I almost ran out of gas. So the Tiger holds like 4.2 gallons of gas, or 4.3, somewhere in there, and the range is about 200 miles. Um, I did hit up the National Motorcycle Museum, but I didn't get gas there, and I had like, I don't know, maybe 80 or 90 miles to empty at that point. And so I, like, well, we're on main highways, so I, I, obviously I can stop in Cedar Rapids, or Iowa City, or any of the number of towns that I'm heading toward, right? So we, get on the highway, start heading towards Cedar Rapids, turn south before you get into any downtown areas or anywhere that has gas. So I started heading south, getting close to Iowa City, well, you start you turn west on I-80 before you get to Iowa City, so there are no gas stations. Then, once you're on I-80, outside of Iowa City, there is nothing in Iowa but farms. There were no gas stations. Finally, there was like a strip mall at one of the exits. I got off, the Tiger had seven miles to empty. Pulled up to the gas station. Oh, nice little SD7. And there was no premium at the gas station. So I'm like, oh man, do I drop in 87? What's up, dude? And then I looked behind me, and thankfully the uh, British Petroleum, perfect for the Tiger, saved my butt. It was sitting on the other side of the road and had premium. So if you have, like, an inkling for a stop or any time that you do stop on a road trip, really you should gas the bike up. There's no reason to try to push it just to get an extra 50 miles because that was crazy. And I can't imagine, like, walking across Iowa. Nobody's going to stop to help you. Nothing but farm fields for miles, so there's no way you're just going to be, like, walking a half mile to a gas station. You're probably walking, like, seven or eight miles to a gas station. So that was my trip to the Driftless. It was an awesome adventure. I really wish I would have got footage for you guys. I'm so sorry for dropping my camera batteries in the river. I did fish the mouth though. They just weren't usable. So next time I will keep spare batteries at least back at camp so I could go grab a set. You know, if I were to lose the ones that were on the bike. And also, you know, don't get so excited to ford a creek that you, uh, <laughs> forget that you left all your stuff sitting on the passenger pillion. <laughs> all right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace out.